Footsteps on the Road to Learning, or The Alphabet in Rhyme. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. I've got a new book, full of fine pictures, too, and now I will try to read it all through, thus showing Mama how good I can be, and how well I remember my A, B, C, D. A is for ass, for ape, and for ark, as well as for ant and for an. B is for boy, for bat, and for bark, for bag, and for bed, and for bran. C is for cow, for calf, and for cart, for cot, and for cat, and for cake. D is for dog, for dame, and for dart, and also for duck, and for drake. E is for eye, for ear, and for east, for elk, and for eel, and for end. F is for fire, for fan, and for feast, for fox, and for frank, and for friend. G is for girl, for great and for gull, for go and for gun and for gate. H is for hen, for hop and for hull, for hat and for hut and for hate. I is for ink, for idler, for inn, for ibex, for ice and for ill. J is for jug, for john and for jim, for jig and for jack and for jill. K is for kite, for kid and for key, for kiss and for keg and for keep. L is for lamb, for lad and for lee, for lip and for leg and for leap. M is for mask, for merry and male, for man and for map and for moon. N is for nose, for net and for nail, for nut and for nest and for noon. O is for old, for owl and for out, for ox and for oar and for oak. P is for play, for pin and for pout, and also for pen, pig, and pork. Q is for quiet, for quiver and quill, for quick and for queen and for quack. R is for rabbit, for rat and for rill, for rose and for ring and for rack. S is for sea, for ship and for shop, for sister, for star, and for sun. T is for tree, for ten, and for top, for tub, and for toad, and for ton. U is for urchin, for urus, for urn, for use, and for up, and for us. V is for vend, for visit, and vain, for vine, and for vat, and for vice. W is for wagon, for wig, and for wing, for whale, and for wine, and for wrist. X is for Xerxes, a famous old king, but for words, not a very long list. Y is for yoke, for you, and for yell, for youth, and for year, and for yeast. Z is for zebra, for zenny, and zeal, for zephyr, for zone, and for zest. Ampersand is a character, oftentimes used, in place of the word a and d. And though not a letter, tis never refused a place in the ABC. The twenty-six letters have now all been named, and I hope you will learn them at once. Indeed, if you don't, you will need be ashamed to be known for a very great dunce. End of The Footsteps on the Road to Learning, or The Alphabet in Rhyme. The Anti-Slavery Alphabet This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson The Anti-Slavery Alphabet In the morning, sow thy seed. Philadelphia Printed for the Anti-Slavery Fair, 1847 Maryhugh and Thompson, Printers, 7 Carter's Alley to our little readers. Listen, little children, all. Listen to our earnest call. You are very young, tis true, but there's much that you can do. Even you can plead with men that they buy not slaves again. 
and that those they have may be quickly set at liberty. They may hearken what you say, though from us they turn away. Sometimes when from school you walk, you can with your playmates talk, tell them of the slave child's fate, motherless and desolate, and you can refuse to take candy, sweetmeat, pie or cake, saying no, unless tis free. The slave shall not work for me. Thus, dear little children, each may some useful lesson teach. Thus each one may help to free this fair land from slavery. A is an abolitionist, a man who wants to free the wretched slave and give to all an equal liberty. B is a brother with a skin of somewhat darker hue, but in our heavenly Father's sight he is as dear as you. C is the cotton field to which this injured brother's driven, when as the white man's slave he toils from early morn till even. D is the driver, cold and stern, who follows, whip in hand, to punish those who dare to rest or disobey command. E is the eagle, soaring high, an emblem of the free. But while we chain our brother man, our type, he cannot be. F is the heart-sick fugitive, the slave who runs away, and travels through the dreary night, but hides himself by day. G is the gong, whose rolling sound before the morning light calls up the little sleeping slave to labor until night. H is the hound, his master trained, and called to scent the track of the unhappy fugitive and bring him trembling back. I is the infant, from the arms of its fond mother torn, and at a public auction sold with horses, cows, and corn. J is the jail upon whose floor that wretched mother lay, until her cruel master came and carried her away. K is the kidnapper who stole that little child and mother, shrieking, it clung around her, but he tore them from each other. L is the lash that brutally he swung around its head, threatening that if it cried again, he'd whip it till twas dead. M is the merchant of the north who buys what slaves produce, so they are stolen, whipped, and worked for his and for our use. N is the negro rambling free in his far distant home, delighting neath the palm tree's shade and cocoa nut to roam. O is the orange tree that bloomed beside his cabin door when white men stole him from his home to see it nevermore. P is the parent, sorrowing and weeping all alone. The child he loved to lean upon, his only son is gone. Q is the quarter where the slave on coarsest food is fed and where with toil and sorrow worn he seeks his wretched bed. R is the rice swamp, dank and lone, where weary, day by day, he labors till the fever wastes his strength and life away. S is the sugar that the slave is toiling hard to make, to put into your pie and tea, your candy and your cake. T is the rank tobacco plant, raised by slave labor too, a poisonous and nasty thing for gentlemen to chew. U is for Upper Canada, where the poor slave has found rest after all his wanderings, for it is British ground. V is the vessel in whose dark, noisome, and stifling hold hundreds of Africans are packed, brought o'er the seas, and sold. W is the whipping post, to which the slave is bound, while on his naked back the lash makes many a bleeding wound. X is for Xerxes, famed of yore. A warrior stern was he, he fought with swords. Let truth and love our only weapons be. Y is for youth, the time for all, bravely to war with sin, and think not it can ever be too early to begin. Z is a zealous man, sincere, 
faithful and just and true, an earnest pleader for the slave, will you not be so too? End of the Anti-Slavery Alphabet The Peter Pan Alphabet by Oliver Herford This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson The Peter Pan Alphabet A round robin to J.M. Barry From his humble and devoted servants, the alphabet. The Lord forgive if we transgress, Thus to familiarly address one of our betters. But, Jamie, do you no recall the slate Whereon you learn to scrawl your humble letters? Well, we remember how you drew our shapely features all askew, unflattering, really. You made A lame, and B too fat, and C too curly. What of that? We loved you dearly. From that first day we owned your spell, and just because you used us well, we served you blindly. Why, even when you put us through a fearsome Scottish reel, we knew you meant it kindly. Jamie. Tis said grand tales there be, still biding in the ABC. If this be true, quick, Jamie, cast your golden net. Maybe we have the grandest yet in store for you. A is for Adams. So A is for Adams. Oh, fortunate A. Luck certainly seems to be coming your way. In the days of my infancy, A, I recall, stood for ant or for apple or anything small. Now A stands for Adams, Maud Adams. Hooray! I always said A would be famous some day. B stands for the boys. B's for the boys, all as busy as bees. They are building a little house under the trees with funny red walls and mossy green roof where Wendy may live from danger aloof. C is the crocodile. C is the crocodile creepy who ate the right hand of hook and covets its mate. He makes a loud ticking wherever he goes, for he swallowed a clock to kill time, I suppose. D is for doodle-doo. D is the dire and dread doodle-doo, with which Peter daunted the pirate crew, and demolished a foolish old proverb for good by crowing before he was out of the wood. E is the exit. E is the exit the three children made, with Peter and Tinker for guides. Who's afraid? They sailed through the window as calm as could be, like three little cherubim out for a spree. F is the fight. F is the fight Peter fought unafraid, and F is his falchion, poetic for blade, and F's the fine feeling all fearless boys feel when they give a fierce pirate a taste of cold steel. G is old glory. G is old glory that Peter upreared, when Hook in the crocodile smile disappeared, and the decks were still wet with the terrible stains of invisible gore from the pirate's veins. H stands for Hook. I'm sorry for H, though I don't call Hook mean for wanting to blow up his own magazine. I've known a good author blow up in a huff a magazine just for not printing his stuff. Eyes for the Indian girl. Peter Pan was too coy for the Indian miss. She sighed for his scalp. All she got was a kiss. J is for John. J is for John. No, he hasn't a pain. He is red-handed Jack of the pirate main. K stands for a kiss. K stands for a kiss? Oh, stern-featured K, who would have suspected you'd leanings that way? Peter called his a thimble. I think it sounds tame to call kisses thimbles. But what's in a name? L is the lion. L is the lion who lashed his fierce tail. And did Peter tremble? Did Peter turn pale? Not much. T'was the lion who moved to adjourn. He couldn't turn tail. Peter left none to turn. M is for Michael. M is for Michael? Sss! Whisper it low. In pirate circles he's called Blackbeard Joe. N is for Napoleon and Nana. N is Napoleon, mystic, profound, and N is for Nana, the noble nurse hound. Two wonderful natures, each great in his way. One's dead, and the other is having his day. 
O's for Oddsfish. O's for Oddsfish, the pirate's oath. To print such a word, gentle reader, I'm loath. And should you be guilty of language so low, I should have to stop calling you gentle, you know. P is for Peter. P is for Peter, and so are we all. May he ever keep young and his shadow stay small. Yet I think tis a pity the White House is banned. As president, Peter would simply be grand. Q is the quiver. Q is the quiver from which Tootles drew, the arrow that nearly pierced poor Wendy through. Twas Peter's kiss button that stopped it. Ah, me! If kisses were buttons, how safe they would be. R's for the redskins. R's for the redskins who guarded the cave. What a treat to see engines sit up and behave. S is the shadow. S is the shadow, though not of much use. You'd surely be sorry if yours should get loose. So see to your shadow. Be sure it's on tight. When Peter lost his, he was in a sad plight. T is for Tinkerbell. Poor Tinkerbell's dying. Quick, say you believe in fairies that Tinker new life may receive. U is the underground home. Use the underground home mid the roots of the trees, where when not slaying pirates, the boys take their ease, while Wendy sits mending their shirt waists and hose, and the redskins above keep watch against foes. V is the verse. V's the vile verse that the pirate bawled. It was not his language so much that appalled, nor the tune, nor his voice, which was raucous and deep. Twas the way that he sang it that made your flesh creep. W's wolves. W's wolves? Tis said they will fly if you look through your legs at them straight in the eye. That's how the boys did it. But if I were you, I'd experiment first on a wolf in the zoo. X is the X-ray. X is the X-ray by whose light alone this last fleeting picture of Hook may be shown. Y is for youth. Why is for youth to which Peter clung? But where is the land where he learned to stay young? Ask Peter, he'll tell you, geography scorning. Second turn to the right, and keep straight on till morning. Z is the zebra. Z is the zebra the boys didn't meet, but without which no alphabet's really complete. End of The Peter Pan Alphabet by Oliver Herford An Alphabet of Celebrities by Oliver Herford. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. An Alphabet of Celebrities. A's Albert Edward, well meaning but flighty, who invited King Arthur, the blameless and mighty, to meet Alcibiades and Aphrodite. B is for Bernhardt, who fails to awaken, much feeling in Bismarck, Barabbas and Bacon. C is Columbus, who tries to explain how to balance an egg to the utter disdain of Confucius, Carlyle, Cleopatra, and Cain. D is for Diogenes, Darwin, and Dante, who delight in the dance of a darling Bacanti. E is for Edison, making believe he's invented a clever contrivance for Eve, who complained that she never could laugh in her sleeve. F is for Franklin, who fearfully shocks the feelings of Fenelon, Faber, and Fox. G is Godiva, whose great bareback feat she kindly but firmly declines to repeat, though Gounod and Goldsmith implore and entreat. H is for Handel, who pours out his soul, through the bagpipes, to Howells and Homer, who roll on the floor, in ecstasy past all control. I is for Ibsen, reciting a play, while Irving and Ingersoll hasten away. J is for Johnson, who only says, pish, to Jonah, who tells him his tale of a fish. K is the Kaiser, who kindly repeats some original verses to Kipling and Keats. L is La Fontaine, who finds he's unable to interest Luther and List in his fable, while Lowy continues to dance on the table. M is Macduff, 
who's prevailed upon Milton and Montaigne and Manon to each try a kilt on. N is Napoleon shrouded in gloom, with Nero, Narcissus, and Norda, to whom he's explaining the manual of arms with a broom. O is for Oliver, casting aspersion on Omar, that awfully dissolute Persian, though secretly longing to join the diversion. P is for Peter, who hollers, No, no, through the keyhole to pain, Paderewski and Poe. Q is the queen, so noble and free, for further particulars look under V. R's Rubinstein, playing that old thing in F, to Rollo and Rembrandt, who wish they were deaf. S is for Swinburne, who, seeing the true, the good and the beautiful, visits the zoo, where he chances on Sapho and Mr. Sardou, and Socrates, all with the same end in view. T is for Talleyrand, toasting Miss Truth, by the side of her well, in a glass of vermouth, and presenting Mark Twain as the friend of his youth. U is for Undine, pursuing Ulysses, and Umberto, who flee her damp death-dealing kisses. V is Victoria, noble and true. For further particulars, look under Q. W's Wagner, who sang and played lots for Washington, Wesley, and good Dr. Watts. His prurient plots pained Wesley and Watts, but Washington said he enjoyed them in spots. X is Xantippe, who's having her say, and frightening the army of Xerxes away. Y is for Young, the great Mormon saint, who thinks little Yum Yum and Yvette so quaint he has to be instantly held in restraint. Z is for Zola, presenting La Terre, to Zenobia the brave, and Zuleika the fair, whose blushes they artfully conceal with their hair. End of An Alphabet of Celebrities by Oliver Herford Funny Alphabet, Uncle Frank's Series, by Edward P. Cogger. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Uncle Frank's Series, Funny Alphabet. The Funny Alphabet. A was an actor, tis clear to your view. B was three boys, forming letters for you. C was a clown, who clever was found. D was a dunce, and harlequin bound. E was soon formed with the aid of a child. F in a frolic appeared to be wild. G was George Godfrey, a truant, I fear. H hand in hand, like two pillars appear. I was an Indian figure for thee. J was Jemima Mermaid, only C. K was Kale Knowledge, to Q he was bound. L was Luke Lazy, he's now on the ground. M, Master Merriman, mark what I say. N, Nettie Noodle, the Vicar of Bray. O, Obadiah, a letter quite round. P, Paul Plaintive, in pleasure was found. Q, Quit, was in shape much like O. R. Robin Roughhead, I'd have you to know. S. Simon Sobersides, serious and soft. T. Timothy Touchstone, tomboy and torch. U. Uniform Union and Unicorn Trot. V. Very vexatious, his letters forgot. W. Walter and William were vexed. X in the alphabet is sure to stand next. Y was a youngster, he'd play with his betters. Z was a zany, for not knowing his letters. End of Uncle Frank's Series, Funny Alphabet, by Edward P. Conker. Little People, an Alphabet, by Henry Mayer and T. W. H. Crossland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Little People, an Alphabet. 
A for Arab. This Arab is upset, I fear. Look at his pretty shield and spear. He's stuck two pistols in his sash, and, dear me, how his eyes do flash. At home he has a horse to ride, to scour the desert in his pride. His horse is of the purest breed. Some people call his horse a steed. B for boar. Here is your little brother boar. Of course, you've heard of him before. He has a naughty Uncle Paul, who used to want to eat us all. Although he does not wear a tie, he's just as white as you or I, and just as fond of cake and fruit. The difference is that he can shoot. C for China Boy Lee has a pigtail and a fan, and yet he's not a China man. In fact, he is his mother's joy, a merry little China boy. His father is a Mandarin. His father's name is Lu Tu Sin. They put no sugar in his tea, yet he's as good as good can be. D for Dutch. Miss Gretchen Gruppel, she is Dutch. In Holland, there are many such. Her shoes are wooden, like the floor. How nice she keeps her pinafore. She says that there is nothing finer than the Dutch queen, Wilhelmina. She says that she has never seen a sweeter queen than Wilhelmina. E for English. The English are a splendid race, sturdy of limb, honest of face. They own, this is geography, much of the land and all the sea. That is to say, they rule the waves. They never, never will be slaves. They're brave, but do not want to fight. And if you're English, you're all right. F for French. The French can cook and fence and dance. They're fond of shouting, Long live France! They make the prettiest hats and frocks. Also French pickles and French clocks. They shave their poodles, drink much wine, and laugh a great deal when they dine. French boys play soldiers now and then, and must be soldiers when they're men. G for German. Hans, as you see, to town has been. His waistcoat's red, his sunshade green. He lives beside the river Iser, and calls his emperor the Kaiser. In Germany, no end of toys are made for English girls and boys. The English children merely break them. Hans sits at home and helps to mack them. H for Hungarian. In Hungary, they hunt and fish. Between ourselves, I often wish I lived there. But it must be grand. I've heard the blue Hungarian band. In Hungary, a boy wears white blouses. His knickers fit him tight. He has top boots of patent leather, and in his hat a peacock's feather. I for Indian. The Indian boy is neatly dressed. He has no shirt. He wears a crest of eagle's feathers on his head. His skin is of a coppery red. If you said to him, You and I will run and catch a butterfly, the Indian boy would say, No, no, I wish to chase the buffalo. J for Japanese. The little Japs are rather small. Even their fathers are not tall. They're very fond of parasols. They dress themselves just like their dolls. They live beneath the sunniest skies. Their hair is black to match their eyes. Their robes are black to match their hair. And oh, what tiny shoes they wear. K for Kafir. This Kafir looks a trifle sly. He smiles and smiles, I wonder why. Perhaps he's playing at a game, or thinking of his long, long name. His name, you know, is Washington, Nebuchadnezzar, Solomon, Sambo, Snowball, Timothy, Jack, Adolphus, Rule, Britannia, Black. L for Laplander. I think the Laplander is nice. He lives among the snow and ice. The reindeer drags his sledge for him and gives him meat and milk to skim. His spears are sharp, they shine like steel. He hunts the walrus and the seal, often when he has time to spare. He hunts the white or polar bear. M for Mexican. 
The plucky little Mexican rides on the pampas like a man. His horse may kick and plunge and rear. He does not feel the least bit queer. If he should see an old gray goose or a young turkey running loose, you may be pretty certain that he'd catch it with his lariat. And for Neapolitan. The Neapolitan is wise. He plays the pipes for pence and buys ice cream and candy every day to help him on his weary way. His tunes are chiefly of one note. He has a sheepskin for a coat. His water bottles painted yellow. He is a handsome little fellow. O oh, for Odalisk. O oh, pretty little Odalisk, I know you want to dance and frisk and play at hide-and-seek with me, and yet you know it cannot be, unless, unless, my dear, you choose to put away those curious shoes, also your coat and cap and veil. They'd hang up nicely on a nail. P for Persian. The Persian has a funny hat. He often sits upon a mat. He hears the bulbul sing and roves through rose gardens and lemon groves. Child, if by any chance you meet a little Persian in the street, do not be rude and cry, Ya, ya! But ask him if he's seen the Shah. Q for Quakeress. I like the little Quakeress. She is so quaint. I like her dress, her very, very plain white bonnet, her stuff gown with no trimming on it. Her hands are pink and soft and small. They peep out from her dark green shawl. She lives on milk and bread and honey. She must be saving pots of money. R for Russian. Russia is noted for its tar, its leather, and its great white czar. A Russian wears his clothes quite loose and drinks his tea with lemon juice. The Russian boys have chubby faces. They play at marbles and run races. The climate sometimes makes them cough. They've names like Shufsky and Popoff. S for Scotch. The Scotch wear kilts, both boys and men. When they don't know, they dinna ken. They love the thistle, we the rose. They're fond of oatmeal, kale, and brose. In war the Scotch are very bold. Burns was a Scot, who I am told, wrote verses and ploughed fields by turns. So every Scot is proud of Burns. T for Tyrolean. The Tyrol has a splendid air and mountains, mountains everywhere. The mountains are all tops and sides. You climb them best with ropes and guides. The Tyrolean's hat is smart. He yodels and is light of heart. His yodeling is very sweet. His stockings haven't any feet. You for United States. The states are full of mush and pie, and houses twenty stories high, sawmills and millionaires and bustle. The people there have got to hustle. The business of the states is done exclusively by telephone, and that is why the people say, I guess we're cute in USA. V for Valencian. Valencia is a little town in Spain. It's dusty and baked brown and full of dirt and mules and fleas, and all around are orange trees. This well-fed boy, as you may see, has been dressed very carefully. His garments show that he's a don. He knows that he has got them on. W for Welshman. Taffy, my boy, I've heard with grief that shocking tale about the beef. But Taffy, between me and you, I really don't believe it's true. I'm told that there are pretty vales, and hills with sheep on them in Wales. Oh, Taffy, Taffy, don't be put on. You can't want beef while you've Welsh mutton. Z for Zany. A Zany is a kind of clown who wanders idly up and down and wags his head and shakes his bells and chortles at the tales he tells. He'll joke with you in sun or shower, and keep you laughing by the hour. Some zanies are a trifle mad. Now we have finished, and I'm glad. End of Little People, an Alphabet, by Henry Mayer.
and T. W. H. Crossland. An Alphabet of Old Friends by Walter Crane. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. An Alphabet of Old Friends. A. A carrion crow sat on an oak, watching a tailor shape his cloak. Wife, bring me my old bent bow, that I may shoot yon carrion crow. The tailor he shot, and missed his mark, and shot his own sow quite through the heart. Wife, wife, bring brandy in a spoon, for our old sow is in a swoon. B. Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, Mary, have I three bags full, one for my master, one for my dame, but none for the little boy that cries in the lane. C. Hen. Cock, cock, I have laid. Cock. Hen, hen, that's well said. Hen. Although I have to go barefooted every day. Cock. Con spirito. Sell your eggs and buy shoes. Sell your eggs and buy shoes. D. Dickory, dickory, dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one. Down the mouse ran. Dickory, dickory, dock. E. Elizabeth, Elspeth, Betsy, and Bess. They all went together to seek a bird's nest. They found a bird's nest with five eggs in. They all took one and left four in. F. Father, father, I've come to confess. Oh, yes, dear daughter, what have you done? G. Gang, and hear the owl yell. Sit and see the swallow flee. See the foal before its Mither's E, twill be a thriving year with thee. H. Hushaby baby on the tree top. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the wind ceases, the cradle will fall. And down will come baby, and cradle, and all. I. I had a little husband, no bigger than my thumb. I put him in a pint pot, and there I bade him drum. I bought a little horse that galloped up and down. I bridled him and saddled him and sent him out of town. I gave him a pair of garters to tie up his little hose and a little silk handkerchief to wipe his little nose. J. Jack Spratt would eat no fat. His wife would eat no lean. Was not that a pretty trick to make the platter clean? K. King Cole was a merry old soul, and a merry old soul was he. He called for his pipe, and he called for his bowl, and he called for his fiddlers three. Every fiddler had a fiddle, and a very fine fiddle had he. Twee, tweedledee, tweedledee went the fiddlers. Oh, there's none so rare as can compare with King Cole and his fiddlers three. L. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep, and can't tell where to find them. Let them alone, and they'll come home, and bring their tails behind them, etc. M. Mistress Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells, and cockle shells, and cowslips all of a row. N. Needles and pins, needles and pins. When a man marries, his trouble begins. O. Oh. Once I saw a little bird come hop, hop, hop. So I cried, little bird, will you stop, stop, stop? And was going to the window to say, how do you do? When he shook his little tail, and far away he flew. P. Peas pudding hot. Peas pudding cold, P 
peas pudding in the pot nine days old. Q. Queen was in the parlor eating bread and honey. R. Ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross to see an old woman get up on her horse. Rings on her fingers and bells at her toes, and so she makes music wherever she goes. S. Simple Simon met a pieman going to the fair. Says Simple Simon to the pieman, Let me taste your ware. T. Taffy was a Welshman. Taffy was a thief. Taffy came to my house and stole a leg of beef. I went to Taffy's house. Taffy was not at home. Taffy came to my house and stole a marrow bone. I went to Taffy's house. Taffy was in bed. I took the marrow bone and broke Taffy's head. You. Up hill and down dale, butter is made in every vale. And if Nancy Cock is a good girl, she shall have a spouse and make butter anon before her old grandmother grows a young man. V. Valentine, O oh Valentine, curl your locks as I do mine. Two before and two behind. Good morrow to you, Valentine. W. Where are you going, my pretty maid? I am going a-milking, sir, she said. May I go with you, my pretty maid? You are kindly welcome, sir, she said. What is your father, my pretty maid? My father's a farmer, sir, she said. Say, will you marry me, my pretty maid? Yes, if you please, kind sir, she said. What is your fortune, my pretty maid? My face is my fortune, sir, she said. Then I won't marry you, my pretty maid. Nobody asked you, sir, she said. X. Cross X patch. Draw the latch. Sit by the fire and spin. Take a cup and drink it up. Then call the neighbors in. Why? You know that Monday is Sunday's brother. Tuesday is such another. Wednesday you must go to church and pray. Thursday is half holiday. On Friday it is too late to begin to spin. And Saturday is half holiday again. Z. Zodiac for the nursery. The ram, the bull, the heavenly twins, and next the crab, the lion shines, the virgin and the scales, the scorpion, archer, and the goat, the man who holds the watering pot, and fish with glittering scales. End of An Alphabet of Old Friends by Walter Crane Dame Wonder's Picture Alphabet This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Dame Wonder's Picture Alphabet. A stands for an archer, B for his bow, C the crow that he shot at, and D for his dog. E stands for an ensign, F for a flag and a fort, G stands for a goat, and H for a horse. I stands for an Italian, J for a jug, and for Jane. K stands for a kite, and L for a lobster. M stands for Mary, N for the numbers she wrote. O stands for an owl, and P for a pretty parrot. Q stands for a queen, R for the rose in her hand, S for the sword of state, T the throne and the table. U stands for uncle, V for violin, W for windmill, and X for number ten. Y stands for a yacht, or yote, and Z for a zebra. End of Dame Wonder's Picture Alphabet The Illustrated Alphabet of Birds This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson The Illustrated Alphabet of Birds 
the auk. A is an auk of the Arctic Sea, who lives on the ice where the winds blow free, the bluebird. B is a bluebird in early spring, how sweet his songs through the forest ring, the condor. C is a condor on the Andes height, he plumes his wings for a lofty flight, the duck. D is a duck of the canvas back sort, to shoot at a flock is considered fine sport, the bald eagle. E is a bald eagle, so bold and so free, on the flag of our country he spans land and sea, the fish hawk. F is a fish hawk who lives on the shore, he catches his prey mid the ocean's roar. The goose. G is a goose, his feathers we take, and put them in sacking, our beds to make. The hummingbird. H is a hummingbird, sporting mid flowers, and brightly enjoying the sunny hours. The ibis. I is an ibis, who wanders in bogs, and lives upon lizards and fishes and frogs. The jay. J is a jay, with his blue and white coat with a crest on his head and a ring round his throat. The kingbird. K is a kingbird, pugnacious and bold, a hero in fight and a terrible scold. The lark. L is a lark, a sociable bird. His song in the meadow is frequently heard. The magpie. M is a magpie. He lives at the west, steals and scolds and eats carrion. He's none of the best. The night heron. N is a night heron, a fish's quite fond. He looks for them now as he stands by the pond. The owl. O is an owl who hides through the day and comes out at night to seek for his prey. The pigeon. P is a pigeon so rapid in flight that before you can shoot him, he's gone out of sight. The quail. Q is a quail who hides in a tree and whistles, Bob White, with lively glee. The robin. R is the robin, so kind and so good, who covered with leaves the poor babes in the wood. The swallow. S is the swallow. She darts through the air to catch little insects, her favorite fare. The turkey. T is a turkey, a fine dashing bow, by his fuming and strutting, his pride you may know. The upupa, use the upupa, or hupo, his crest he can raise up or lower, as suits him best. The vulture, V is a vulture, who feeds on the dead, when the dark battlefield with corpses is spread. The woodpecker, W's a woodpecker, who with his long bill bores holes in a tree, and of worms eats his fill. The Xanthoranus. X is Xanthornus, or Baltimore bird. Oft in our orchards his music is heard. The Yellow Bird. Why is a yellow bird, with feathers so bright, who sings all the day and sleeps all the night? The letter Z, or Roost. Z stands for none of the feathered race. It must serve as a roost or lose the last place. End of the Illustrated Alphabet of Birds The Absurd ABC by Walter Crane This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. The Absurd ABC. A for the apple, or alphabet pie, which all get a slice of, come taste it and try. B is the baby who gave Mr. Bunting full many a long day's rabbit skin hunting. C for the cat that played on the fiddle, when cows jumped higher than hey-diddle-diddle. Diddle. D for the dame with her pig at the stile. Tis said they got over, but not yet a while. E for the Englishman ready to make fast 
the giant who wanted to have him for breakfast. F for the frog in the story you know, begun with a wooing, but ending in woe. G for Goosey Gander, who wandered upstairs, and met the old man who objected to prayers. H for poor Humpty, who after his fall felt obliged to resign his seat on the wall. I for the inn where they wouldn't give beer to one with too much, and no money, I fear. J does for poor Jack, and also for Jill, who had so disastrous a tumble downhill. K for calm Kitty, at dinner who sat, while all the good folks watched the dog and the cat. L for little man, gun and bullets complete, who shot the poor duck, and was proud of the feat. M for Miss Muffet, with that horrid spider, just dropped into tea and a chat beside her. And for the numerous children they who were often too much for their mother in shoe. Oh, the old person that cobwebs did spy, and went up to sweep em, oh, ever so high. P for the pie, made of blackbirds to sing, a song fit for supper, a dish for a king. Q for Queen Anne, who sat in the sun, till she, more than the lily, resembled the bun. R stands for Richard and Robert, those men, who didn't get up one fine morning till ten. S for the snail, that showed wonderful fight, putting no less than twenty-four tailors to flight. T stands for Tom, the son of the piper. May his principles change as his years grow riper. U for the unicorn, keeping his eye on, the coveted crown, and his counsel, the lion. V for the victuals, including the drink, the old woman lived on, surprising to think. W for the woman, who not over nice, made very short work of the three blind mice. X is the X that is found upon buns, which, daughters not liking, may come in for sons. Y for Yankee Doodle, of ancient renown, both he and his pony that took him to town. Z for the zany, who looked like a fool, for when he was young, he neglected his school. End of the Absurd ABC by Walter Crane